Update. Sister-in-law is bitter, her ex proposed to me, and this got her banned from our family. Am I the a-hole for this? Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our... Oh, 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 hang on a tick, hang on. <laughs> this update will be very long, so if you don't want to waste time reading the first part, you can skip directly to the actual update. Thank you so much for all your comments and reaching out to me. I don't know what I expected when I posted. I guess I wanted to receive some unbiased feedback from an outside perspective, but I never expected this. I was really overwhelmed with how kind and nice most of you were. So once again, thank you and sorry for not being able to reply to all the comments. For those who were not on the same page, I understand and respect that you have a different opinion. From my initial post, I have left out a lot of details because it's a long story. But some of you were curious about what actually happened and asked me to provide more details. So buckle up. I will do just that. How I met my future husband. I got asked a lot if I live in a trailer park or small town with only a bar available. The answer is no. We actually live in a big city with a population of a couple of million of people. I met my fiancé through a mutual friend. My girlfriend was dating one of George's colleagues and they all began to hang out for drinks after work since they were all in the same building. At some point I had no plans for that day and my girlfriend invited me to go with them to a bar and this is how we were introduced. After we started having different group activities together and things slowly progressed. George targeted his ex's younger sister-in-law to spite her and there was no coincidence that we started dating. As absurd as it may sound, it was indeed an ironic coincidence. You may think out of millions of people there are in a city, what are the chances for you to start dating your sister-in-law's ex? Well, it happened to me and we did not know about it in the beginning. The girlfriend that asked me to go out with them to a bar did not know Ella, never saw her in real life, and never saw her with George. When George met me, he had no idea that I had any connection to Ella, so there was no chance for him to be an evil mastermind and intentionally date me just to spite her. I did not take George home to meet my family immediately either. Maybe I am the weird one, but... I was never the type to parade my boyfriends in front of my parents if I was not sure the relationship was going to last. I broke the girl's code. I do not consider that I did. Let's be clear. I have a couple of true friends. They have been my friends for many years and I would do anything for them. I'm a very loyal person and I know the girl's code very well. When we eventually found out the connection Ella had with both of us, I was shocked and I asked the same question that many of you did. What were the chances? It was a very uncomfortable position to be in. Even though I had no relationship with Ella except the obvious one of her being my sister-in-law, it was very strange to know that they dated. I wanted to find out what happened before taking any decision and I did. The way I saw things, there was no reason for me to punish George for having a past. We were in love. We were happy, and Ella was already married to my brother. I may have been selfish, but I thought, is this man and our relationship worth it? And the answer was yes. To me, he was, is, and will always be worth it. Also, we see my brother and Ella only a couple of times a year. Most of the times, for obvious reasons, we prefer to visit my parents separately. George's Addictions so many of you reached out to me being concerned about this and I wanted to thank you for caring and say I am sorry you had to go through traumatic experiences with addicts. Some of your stories were hard to read and I appreciate immensely that you were open to share your experiences with a stranger. I understand why most of you were triggered by my story, but George was not that type of addict. He had a lot of unresolved trauma. He was lonely, unloved and ashamed, so his coping mechanism were parties, alcohol and drugs. 
His entourage was not the best. You can imagine a bunch of 36-year-old party boys and girls are no good. But at the end of the day, when everyone else went home to their families, wives and kids, these were the people who could provide company to George. I think it was more like all of them providing company to each other so they could feel less lonely. But other than this, George was a functional adult. He had a stable, well-paying job. He was, and still is, working as a software engineer. He was never violent, etc. George changed for me. No, George changed for himself, and because he wanted to. He told me that I was the trigger that made him want to get his life in order, but in a more meaningful way than just wanting to get into my pants. When we started hanging out as a group with my friend and his colleague, He learned how easy it was to interact and have fun without drugs or alcohol. He also saw that I enjoyed spending time with him. I looked forward to seeing him every time and he understood that his sober self is not unlovable. He was longing for healthy relationships and normality, but until that moment, he felt like he was not deserving to have them. I think the way I helped him was solely because I saw and fell in love with his true self and that gave him confidence and purpose. I am the golden child. There is no such thing in our family. My parents love my brother and I the same. Of course, when they heard Ella's BS the first time, they were worried for me, but I was open with them. I told them how things happen. George was honest and never hid his troubled past from them, and in the end, they were okay with our relationship. My parents trust me trust my judgment, and they only want to see me happy. And in regards to Ella, my parents are just doing what every parent should, defend their child. She was warned before. My parents talked to her, asked her to stop acting like this, and told her she is out of line. So it's not like they kicked her out the first time it happened. Now, into the update. Yesterday, I contacted my brother and asked him to meet me for coffee. It was only the two of us, and I think it was the first time I have opened my heart like this in front of him. I started off by apologising for him being caught in the middle, but I told him I will never apologise or be sorry for loving George. I was honest and told him how much this situation has been affecting me. My brother is the same age as my fiancé so he is 11 years older than me. During our childhood, he was my protector, the person I looked up to. Due to our age difference, we never really had many activities in common, and I could not wait for the moment I grew up so I could get to share more with my brother as adults. But I did not get the chance to do this because of Ella. David would always teach me to value myself, to choose people who treat me right and make me happy. However, I am not able to share my happiness with him anymore. I understand why he would wish I never met George, but it still hurts knowing that your brother somehow resents the source of your happiness. David would always defend me when I was younger, even in front of our parents. When I was 15, I was experimenting with makeup and it looked bad, really bad. During a family function, one of our uncles got drunk and told me to stop using makeup because I was too young to look like a hooker. David got mad and kicked him out for offending his sister. This is the kind of brother he used to be, and to now see how he stays aside and allows his wife to be offensive and cruel, it's really hurtful. I do not care that she is like that towards me. I don't like Ella at all and I could easily ignore her. But what gets to me the most is she is constantly trying to belittle and humiliate my future husband. I have lived with this man for two years. I have shared so many things with him during this time, and I am certain I know better what kind of man he is. I know how hard it was for him to heal all his trauma. I know how hard he worked day by day to become the best version of himself. I know how much he loves me, protects me, supports me, and I simply lose it when I hear her crap and how she is constantly trying to bring him down. 
Yes, I go bear mode when he is involved, as someone told me in the comments, but I don't care. I will not allow any of my family members to abuse the person I love. I may have tolerated things for my brother's sake, but I will never be quiet in front of his B-I-T-C-H of a wife. I told my brother that I love him and I will always cherish the memories I have with him, but we cannot go on like this. I understand he is a victim and I'm ready to do anything for him if he is willing to accept that his marriage is not good, that Ella is not a good woman and is abusing him. I cannot force him to divorce her because this has to be his choice, but I told him I will accept his decision no matter what it is. He will always be my brother, but George is my family now. We plan on having kids in the near future and there is no way I will ever allow this lunatic of a wife to be near my kids. I also refuse to subject George to the abuse. We tried. We thought that this rough period will eventually pass and that everything will be okay. But unfortunately, Ella became more and more bitter and disgusting. We will see my parents, but I'm standing my ground and will not go to their house if she is present. David and I cried a lot, and for the first time in many years, I felt like I had my brother back. He apologised over and over again and explained a lot of things to me, which gave me the chance to understand him better. But at the same time, I am so angry that I had no idea what was happening to my brother. Some people said that David was a rebound for Ella, but it seems they were both a rebound for each other. What made them marry so fast was the age pressure. My brother was feeling like it was very hard to connect with someone and the prospect of being able to have a family of his own seemed very far away until Ella came and offered him the possibility to have exactly what he wanted without too much struggle. So yeah, in the end, we are all some messed up people in a way or another. I don't know what's going to happen. David said he plans to take some time, go away alone for a couple of days and think what he wants to do. But he said that he'll be back and he wants to have a chat with George to apologise to him as well for everything that has happened. My brother knows that everything Ella says is false. He said everyone is able to see how much George loves me and that we make a great couple. And there are times when he wished to also have something like this in his life. He told me he is proud of the woman I have become and that no matter what happens, I will always be like this in his life. He told me he is so proud of the woman I have become and that no matter what happens, I will always be his little sister. After this, I went home and cried some more with George besides me. I have tried to play strong and denied myself to feel hurt for so long that yesterday I had finally exploded. But it was good because now I feel better. And my friends, I'm just going to quote a comment here. Remember to take care of your own emotional health as well as this situation can be quite taxing. Surround yourself with supportive friends and keep communicating with George. It's clear that you both are committed to each other and that foundation is what truly matters. You're navigating a difficult situation with grace and it's okay to prioritise your happiness and the people who truly support you. And OP said thank you. And I agree with that commenter exactly and it's so good to get an end to this story. Anyway, please let me know what you think in the comments down below. And until next time, so long, farewell. Pip pip, cheerio, much love, and bye.